Harry Silton. I understand, Harry. <laughs> Happens all the time. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Harry Hills TV burp moments. Hang on a minute, what? It's past its sell by. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we'll be looking at the funniest and most iconic moments from Harry Hill's TV Burp. Let us know in the comments which sketches you still remember today. Number 10. Eleventh Hour this tense British drama starring Patrick Stewart aired back in 2006. Despite its sombre and serious tone, there was plenty to make fun of. After Patrick finds out which low-lying cities are at risk of climate disaster, given rising sea levels, we realise one of those cities is not like the others. New York, Rio de Janeiro, Los Angeles. And Norwich. <laughs> yes, Norwich is the UK's most at-risk city of flooding, a devastating loss for Britain, as we're sure you'll agree. Further points of mockery for this show include the astute observation that a climate scientist probably sent an email before he died rather than after. He must have done this before he killed himself. Yeah, he must have sent the email before he killed himself. <laughs> It'll come as a huge relief to everybody in the UK, however, that many years on, Norwich Puppet Theatre is still standing. Imagine a world without Norwich. Where would we go for our puppet entertainment if there was no Norwich Puppet Theatre? <laughs> Number 9. Badminton. You ever get that thing when you're playing a really long game of badminton and actually start to age? One minute you're a ten-year-old girl playing badminton, the next you're Billy Piper. It's happened to all of us at one time or another. There she is as a little girl. He became yes. my one true friend. Oh, she's aged at least 10 years. <laughs> this Babington scene came from another Jane Austen adaptation of the 2000s, Mansfield Park, and was apparently the best way the screenwriters could think of to show two characters growing older. Harry takes this further with a skit that shows them continually aging while playing Babington until one of them dies. Who knew a shuttlecock could contain such magical properties? There were plenty of other jokes to be made at the expense of Mansfield Park too, particularly the ridiculous 18th century dancing they did. I didn't know that in the old days they used to play charades to music. <laughs> it's a book. Uh, a film. Uh, an antiques roadshow. Number 8. The Royal Today. This soap spin-off ran for a whopping three months before finding itself canned by ITV because nobody was watching it. Nobody except for Harry Hill, that is, who found plenty of things to make fun of during one week's viewing. The prime target was a patient who happened to look and sound a lot like the Queen and was suffering from some tummy troubles. Well, yes, I, I have something for heartburn and then something for constipation. <laughs> Get well soon, Mom. There was also an extremely annoying magician admitted to the hospital, and an elderly man arrested for accidentally shooting his grandson. It's magic. It's more than magic. It's Mysterio, so. One of the show's funniest moments was when that man arrives in the studio to deliver a Mars bar, taking about 10 minutes to do it. <laughs> Number 7. The Real Extras Unlike the similarly named Ricky Gervais sitcom, Real Extras follows actual out-of-work and generally talentless actors trying to get a paying gig. Keep your hands up. I surrender, I surrender. What are you doing here? I'm an unarmed man. You came to ruin my country. The segment opened with two men trying to reenact a military encounter from the Iraq War, a scene that would make anyone become a pacifist. If ever someone comes up to you and attempts to glorify war, Show them that. <laughs> and perhaps if Tony Blair had seen it, things might have turned out very different. There was also a dead ringer for Meryl Streep, and a double threat actor and singer who wasn't really able to do either. Just call him Mr. Versatility. He acts... Okay, punk. 
stick them up. <laughs> 45 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world. Unemployed extras might be low-hanging fruit, but it doesn't make it any less funny to see their strange audition tapes and showreels. And in fairness, they did get on primetime TV. What other skills has he got? <laughs> Come on! <laughs> <laughs> Number six, ghost towns. By the pricking of my thumbs, something evil this way comes. <laughs> he can't stop. Quick, get his shoes and socks off and tickle his feet to bring him round. After getting unceremoniously fired from Most Haunted in 2005, Derek Akura, the UK's best known spirit medium, got his own spin off show where he was in charge. This was the short-lived Derek Akura's Ghost Towns, and it was just as absurd as you'd expect. There was lots of running around in the dark, shouting and swearing, as Derek Akura became a real-life ghostbuster. Yes, supernatural sleuth Derek Akura and Daniela Westbrook off EastEnders... <laughs> ...sat around in a van hunting for ghosts. It was pretty standard fare for a mid-2000s ghost hunting show, but it seems the public didn't much like Akura when he tried to stake his own claim in this competitive genre. Or maybe it was all the bad language. Why are you here? Why are you bullying this park? Go away, slut! <laughs> Come on, Derek. We've all got to work together. At least sort out your differences off camera. Number five, The Apprentice. Always fertile ground for comedy, that year's series of The Apprentice had plenty of wannabe entrepreneurs who didn't have two pennies to rub together. The boys' team start off by struggling to come up with a name, with Syed producing two lead balloons for suggestions. Any other ideas, Saeed? Just a quick explanation on the A-team. With the A-team, like, the reason why I, I, I mention the A-team is because whatever tasks they, they, they take, they, they, they are winners. <laughs> you know, I, I, I did have uh, another suggestion, winners. While the girls' team gets along far better, there is one particularly loud contestant who's definitely an acquired taste. <laughs> I can see how she might start to get a bit annoying. <laughs> yeah. And as usual, the awkward silences abound as the contestants try to get to know each other while knowing that only one of them can win the show. All in all, a good bunch of people. Definitely. Yeah, we can have some fun. Yeah. They work hard, play hard, don't they? So. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I've just seen someone over there, I don't know. Then they start filming an ad with an out-of-work actor who proves to be a little too enthusiastic. Number 4. Heston's Victorian Feast In his entire career as a TV chef, Heston Blumenthal has never been able to cook something normal. And he doesn't buck the trend there, as he attempts to recreate food that was popular in Victorian times using some bizarre methods. And all I needed to do after that was pop it in a freeze dryer <laughs> and then simply add gelatine and finish with Madeira. <laughs> Say again. Heston also finds out that the Victorians entertain themselves by watching Jelly Wobble, leading to one iconic TV burp bit. What do you say we give it a go? <laughs> He goes to great lengths to try and create the potion Alice drinks in Alice in Wonderland to shrink, which has no shortage of weird flavours in it. And contain the flavours of toffee, hot buttered toast, custard, cherry tart, and turkey, all in one glass. This was a magical drink that never even existed. Yeah, there may be a reason for that. <laughs> if those dinner guests had known what was in there, they never would have drunk it. Number three. Shark attacks. But what really happens when sharks attack? You get bitten by a shark. <laughs> Why do sharks bite people? Because they taste good and are easier to catch than seals. One running joke on TV Burp was that Harry Hill is constantly at risk of shark attack, relentlessly getting attacked by sharks hiding in all manner of common household items. Now, over recent weeks, I myself have been the victim of a number of shark attacks. <laughs> It all started with a bowl of shark fin soup. <laughs> but as the weeks went by, it became ever more ingenious. Getting bitten is just the kind of risk you run while doing the washing up in Britain, we're afraid. And just last week, it hid in a washing up bowl. <laughs> but this particular shark documentary features testimony from a man who was bitten by a shark in its mother's uterus while he was trying to manually help it give birth. 
Subsequently, a fake shark tail appears in the TV burp studio, and Harry falls victim to yet another shark attack. Bitten by an unborn shark. <laughs> mm. Hang on, what, what's that? <laughs> a shark tail? What the... <laughs> it seems his attempts to avoid an encounter are all in vain. Number 2. Ice Cream Wars it's time to find out how Vianetta gets made on Jimmy's Food Factory. Watching all those Vianettas going along the conveyor belt in the factory reminded me a bit of German tanks rolling into Poland. <laughs> they make four million malfunctioning ice creams here every day. Harry's definitely right. They did look like miniature tanks, and one of them promptly invades the studio. It's the Germans! <laughs> his 99 ice cream cone jams, he starts throwing lumps of vanilla ice cream at the German Vianetta, but it's no use. The Vianetta has the upper hand until a British tank containing a funny face ice lolly rolls in. Fire! Thanks, Mr. Funny Face. Not problem, Mr. Harry. Funny faces haven't been around for a long time, so that alone is a blast from the past. Thanks to the brave efforts of this lone soldier, we managed to win the war again. Number 1. Shark vs Toaster No TV burp list would be complete without at least one iconic fight. This one sprang out of a bizarre documentary about sharks presented by Johnny Rotten, who wanted the British public to change their mind about the danger of sharks. Sharks, born free, unlike me, they're tax free. Leave them alone. I will. All I'm doing is swimming with them. You too can. <laughs> He did this by pointing out that toasters kill as many more people each year than sharks. Last year, 791 people were killed by defective toasters, only four by sharks. This begged the age-old question of who would win in a fight. I mean, I like sharks, but the advantage of a toaster over a shark... <laughs> Obviously, a toaster takes up a lot less room on your worktop. Considering toasters and water notoriously don't mix, our money is on the toaster to triumph. Which is better, a toaster or a shark? <laughs> There's only one way to find out. <laughs> Though the shark does get the upper hand, or upper fin, before Harry cuts to an ad break. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.